Hello everybody. Today we're going to be doing another Let's Review. Today's game is Tiny Epic Quest. Now this is the second in the Epic series of board games we're reviewing. Uh, put out by Gameland Games. Uh, this is uh, written by Scott Alms who did the Tiny Epic Western that we did yesterday. Tiny Epic Quest Let's take a look here at the back. I want to show you guys how big. Again, these are small boxes, but there are some big, big things going on here. Now, you're going to want to give this a minute to let this camera adjust, but take a look at how colorful and bright this map is. All of this is in this one little box, and look at how small. This will fit in your backpack. If you're in college, you want to play with some friends. You want to hang out with people, and we're going to tilt the camera down and show you uh, all the pieces here. There are a ton, so I'm going to get through as much as I can, guys. There's a ton of stuff to show you. First of all, right off the bat, here's what we're dealing with. Two phases in this game. You're going to have your day and your night phase. Uh, so what you're going to get is, you're going to get three of these little guys here, these are called your meeples, and you're going to notice little holes on these guys. I love this part of this. Through questing that you will do during the night phase, you're going to set it up during the day phase, you'll get epic items that will fit right on them. I've never seen this in another game, and I've had board games since I was a kid, and uh, I was born in the 70s and grew up in the 80s, so that tells you how many board games I have played. i played a ton of them. And I've still never seen this. The way this one works is there is again strategy, but this one's a little different. The strategy for this one takes place uh, by pushing your luck for one thing. You will notice here this card says rest. Each player is going to get this and you can either rest. You'll see here and the rest will have some benefits if you look. So we will get on in here with this card. So you can see here, get to return to the castle. And you will each have a castle and your characters will return there. Now if you don't want to rest, you can adventure. What I like about this here is this is almost a little player aid. And you can see here that on your turn, this shows you, you will use dice. The dice tell you how to resolve things. So first, you take your damage. Second, you gain your power. Third, you deal with uh, your magic. Uh, and then in any order after, you have your torches or scrolls and attacking goblins. Now your torches and scrolls are used to traverse caves. Now, what caves and where? I'm glad you asked. You have these gorgeous full color map pieces. Now you'll notice roads and you'll notice rivers. These are important. These are very important because the other great strategy piece in this is movement. And again, I haven't seen this used in a game before either. Um, this here, actually, let's set this aside, is one of these various caves that we're talking about here. And you will notice torches on this. So see how, to start with, you need one torch die. So at night you may roll one. You can go in there. If you're going to try and press your luck when it comes your turn again, you're going to roll again and try and get another torch. Well, you notice for those last two, you need two torches apiece. So if on your turn, you only roll one torch, you don't move forward there. You need two. That's very important because that can slow you down and you, you know, you might have wanted to rest instead. Now one big dynamic in this game, as I said, is movement. You have five ways to move, and what I like about it is that the five ways of movement are for all players. So the ways to move here, let's grab these for you, because I think this is really cool actually, are uh, these five here that you see. They are, of course, by horse, of course. So you will see this is one example. Horizontal on the road. And what I like is each movement 
that you pick on your round will allow you uh, and for some reason our camera is fading this lighting today so I do apologize. There we go. Camera's being naughty. There we go. So you can see the gorgeous color artwork. As I said before, Gaming Games does not disappoint on the color art. And then when you're done on a turn, you just flip it right over and you know that movement's done. And then you can go on to another. All these are available to you guys, but the thing that's interesting about this, right? By ship, we've got here by raft, by griffin, which I have not seen in any other game. Diagonal, and check out the griffin there. He's all business. He looks very serious, like he's drinking uh, a lot of coffee. He's not playing around that day. He's not playing. He's serious about this. Now, the thing that's great about this is that you'll notice all of the stuff that we're doing, uh, guys, is as one player picks a movement, say you pick the griffin, you have to be strategic. Are you closer to a temple that you want to get, say, this epic sword in? Uh, which will go on, let's grab this for you all here and show you a little character sheet. Uh, when you set up your character sheets now, you will have things like this on there and you will see swords, your sword, your shield, and your magic wand will be placed there. You will see symbols here of little areas you have to go through. You do a questing there, those move up one. You get both sets of those done, you get them, and each one of them will have special things here. As you see, during night, the Eclipse Hero gains plus one, so the sword is better for whooping the goblins. Now, what is with all these goblins and all this other stuff? The end result of the game, you want to be the most heroic, you want to get quests done, you want to kill goblins, you want to do all of the stuff you can do, uh, and that includes, by the way, learning spells. I mentioned the spells earlier. You get markers and a little spell map. So the day and night resolution. All of that is important. Are you going to rest? Are you going to do some stuff during the day and then rest? Or are you going to push your luck? Back to the movement thing here really quick. When it comes down to it, are you going to try and mess with the other players? Because... On your turn, when you pick the movements, you pick 4 out of 5, and then it turns to night. On your turn here, when you pick the 4 out of 5 movements, every other player has to follow those movements. So you have a chance to screw them over, essentially, because if they're farther away from your goals, but you're closer to your goals, then you're basically doing yourself a big favor, and you're doing them no favors. Uh, if you're closer to a temple or a cave that you're trying to set up for for the night, which is what you really want to do in that, and these are these gorgeous uh, resolution dice you can see here, all these symbols on them. Uh, I believe we have, let's take a look here. There's the fist for socking a goblin. As I said, uh, our camera is hitting our zooms today. And she'll catch up in a minute. Or she's just going to be a royal pain. There she is. Um, we have our nice bright orange torch. All the colors on these are great. But yeah, so basically, you're setting yourself up to prepare for the nighttime and what you want to do. Movement is a great way, uh, and it's something I haven't seen used as part of a strategy. So there are two main strategies in this, I see. One of them is a movement. The other mechanic that I think is great is called pushing your luck. Uh, and, and that is, do you want to rest or do you want to risk the rewards of trying to quest at night? Uh, you can become exhausted now, guys. You can overexert yourself at night. And if you do, you don't get anything. So don't push your luck too hard. Now you'll see here... This is an example, uh, as I said in my last video, of the quality components of Gamelin Games here. I want to show you here, this is this little item rack. We, we threw this together quickly, so. Um, 
but you will see treasures. And again, all these fit on the actual item meeples in those little slots. So these through quests, not all quests, but there are item quests, and you got to go through caves and caverns and traverse and delve and explore, and you can get them. Uh, let's show you goblin token so that you guys can get your your eyes on a goblin. So there you go. There's a goblin. And the goblins will come complete, of course. Um, they are double-sided, as you can see here. Very colorful tokens. Uh, again, just like the other Game Link Games game that I reviewed, Tiny Epic Western. This is Tiny Epic Quest. Uh, these are games that you can really throw in your backpack, go anywhere, and I think these are great games because, again, there is a ton of stuff with this and a ton that you can do. There is even, if you order this from their website, this great little expansion where you get, I kid you not, even more hero-y things to do. Look at these little mushroom people. They're gold mushroom people, and yes, they actually painted them gold. These are, they feel wood. So I think these are actual wood. Little mushroom people. They're adorable, which makes you want to rescue them. Um, and on the map pieces, too, there are strategic places like mushroom grottos and things like that that you can go. And do you chance going there? Um, there are one-time use only places that can give you strategic advantages. Like maybe one will advance you one step farther in the cave so that when the night comes, you have one small advantage. Uh, it's a very interesting game with some very interesting dynamics in terms of risk versus reward, as I've said with the other game. Uh, I like the way they balance things in this one quite nicely. I like the fact that I feel like the kingdoms are all set up in a certain way, but other than that, the rest of the map pieces I feel like are going to end up random a lot, which has a lot of replayability, and the way the movement is set up, you're never really going to end up playing this game the same way twice. Even even if you tried, you couldn't really play this the same. You're never going to hit the same game twice. So, definitely a buy for me. Uh, I really think this is a great game. I'm a huge board game aficionado. That's why we're covering so many of these on Let's Review. I'm going to drop the link below again like I did with the other one. Make sure you pick this puppy up. It is definitely well worth it. Get it right from their website so you get the little mushroom people uh, and the extra the extra stuff with that. You're going to want it. Trust me. It is awesome. Here is the actual little, little booklet for that there. The golden mushrooms. You're going to want that. It even comes with a few extra little map cards for you. It is worth it to get the deluxe edition of this. So deluxe it. You want it. Alright, time bones. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to throw us a uh, thumbs up. And uh, you guys have a great night.